Welcome to chapter 17 of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Chapter 17 is called Cat, Rat, and Dog. Harry's mind had gone blank with shock. The three of them stood transfixed with horror under the invisibility cloak. The very last rays of the setting sun were casting a bloody light over the long shadowed crowns. Then behind them, they heard a wild howling. Ow! Hagrid, Harry muttered. Without thinking about what he was doing, he made to turn back, but both Ron and Hermione seized his arms. We can't, said Ron, who was paper white. He'll be in worse trouble if they know we've been to see him. Hermione's breathing was shallow and uneven. How could they, she joked, how could they? Come on, said Ron, whose teeth seemed to be chattering. They set off back towards the castle, walking slowly to keep themselves hidden under the cloak. Light was fading fast now. By the time they reached open ground, darkness was settling like a spell all around them. Scabbers, keep still, Ron hissed, clamping his hand over his chest. The rat was wriggling madly. Ron came to a sudden halt, trying to force Scabbers deeper into his pocket. What's the matter with you, you stupid rat? Stay still. Ouch! He bit me. Ron, be quiet, Hermione whispered urgently. Fudge will be out here in a minute. He won't stay put. Scabbers was plainly terrified. He was writhing with all his might, trying to break free of Ron's grip. What's the matter with him? That Harry had just seen, slinking towards them, his body low to the ground, wide yellow eyes glinting eerily in the darkness. Crookshanks. Whether he could see them, or was following the sound of Scabber's squeaks, Harry couldn't tell. Crookshanks, Hermione moaned, no, no, go away, Crookshanks, go away. But the cat was getting near. Scabber's no. Too late, the rat had slipped between Ron's clutching fingers, hit the ground and scampered away. In one bound, Crookshank sprang after him, and before Harry or Hermione could stop him, Ron had thrown uh -oh, the invisibility cloak off of himself and pelted away into the darkness. Ron, Hermione moaned. She and Harry looked at each other, then followed at a sprint. It was impossible to run full out under the cloak. They pulled it off, and it streamed behind them like a banner as they hurtled after Ron. They could hear his feet thundering along ahead and his shouts at Crookshanks. Get away from him! Get away! Scabbers, come here! There was a loud thud. Gotcha! Get off, you stinking cat! Harry and Hermione almost fell over Ron. They skidded to a stop right in front of him. He was sprawled on the ground, but Scabbers was back in his pocket. He had both hands held tight over the quivering lump. Ron, come, come back under the cloak, Hermione panted. Dumbledore, the minister, they'll be coming back out in a minute. But before they could cover themselves again, before they could even catch their breath, they heard the soft pounding of gigantic paws. Something was bounding towards them out of the dark, an enormous pale-eyed black dog. Harry reached for his wand, but too late. The dog had made an enormous leap and his front paws hit him right on the chest. He keeled over backwards in a whirl of hair. He felt its hot breath, saw inch long teeth, but the force of its leap had carried it too far and it rolled off him, dazed, feeling as though his ribs were broken. Harry tried to stand up, he could hear it growling as it skidded around for a new attack. Ron was on his feet. As the dog sprang back towards them, he pushed Harry aside. The dog's jaws fastened instead around Ron's outstretched arm. 
Harry lunged at it and seized a handful of the brute's hair, but it was dragging Ron away as easily as if he were a rag doll. Then, out of nowhere, something hit Harry so hard across the face, he was knocked off his feet again, and he heard Hermione shriek with pain and fall too. Harry groped for his wand, blinking blood out of his eyes. Loomis, he whispered. The wand light showed him the trunk of a thick tree. They had chased Scabbers into the shadow of the Whomping Willow, and its branches were creaking as though in a high wind, whipping back and forwards to stop them from going near. And there, at the base of the trunk, was the dog, dragging Ron backwards into a large gap in the roots. Ron was fighting furiously, but his head and torso were slipping out of sight. Ron! Harry shouted, trying to follow, but a heavy branch whipped lethally through the air, and he was forced backwards again. All they could see now was one of Ron's legs, which he had hooked around a root in an effort to stop the dog from pulling him further underground. Then a horrible crack cut the air like a gunshot. Ron's leg had broken, and next second his foot had vanished from sight. Harry, we've, we've got to go for help, Hermione cried, and she was bleeding too. The willow had cut her across the shoulder. No, that thing's big enough to eat him, and we haven't got time. We're never going to get through without help. Another branch whipped down at them, twigs clenched like knuckles. If that dog can get in, we can, Harry panted, darting here and there, trying to find a way in through the vicious, swishing branches. But he couldn't get an inch near to the tree roots without being in the range of the tree's blows. Oh, help, help, Hermione whispered frantically, dancing uncertainly on the spot. Please! Crookshanks darted forwards. He slithered between the battering branches like a snake and placed his front paws upon a knot on the trunk. Abruptly, as though the tree had been turned to marble, it stopped moving. Not a leaf twitched or shook. Crookshanks, Hermione whispered uncertainly. She now grasped Harry's arm painfully hard. How did he know? He's friends with that dog, said Harry grimly. I've seen them together. Come on and keep your wand out. They covered the distance to the trunk in seconds, but before they had reached the gap in the roots, Crookshank had slid into it with a flick of his bottle brush tail. Harry went next. He crawled forwards headfirst and slid down an earthly slope to the bottom of a very low tunnel. Crookshanks was a little way along, his eyes flashing in the light from Harry's wand. Seconds later, Hermione slithered down beside him. Where's Ron? She whispered in a terrified voice. This way, said Harry, setting off, bent back after Crookshanks. Where does this tunnel come out? Hermione asked breathlessly from behind him. I don't know. It's marked on the Marauder's map, but Fred and George said there's that said no one's ever got into it. It goes off the edge of the map, but it looks like it ends up in Hogsmeade. They moved as fast as they could, bent almost double. Ahead of them, Crookshank's tail bobbed in and out of view. On and on went the passage. It felt at least as long as the one to Honeydukes. All Harry could think of was Ron and what the enormous dog might be doing to him. He was drawing breath in sharp, painful gasps, running at a crouch. And then the tunnel began to rise. Moments later, it twisted and Crookshanks had gone. Instead, Harry could see a patch of dim light through a small opening. He and Hermione paused, gasping for breath, edging forwards. Both raised their wands to see what lay beyond. It was a room, a very disordered, dusty room. Paper was peeling from the walls. There were stains all over the floor. Every piece of furniture was broken as though somebody had smashed it. The windows were all boarded up. Harry glanced at Hermione, who looked very frightened, but nodded. Harry pulled himself out of the hole, staring around. The room was deserted, but a door to the right stood open, leading to a shadowy hallway. Hermione suddenly grabbed Harry's arm again. Her eyes 
were wide and traveling around the boarded windows. Harry, she whispered, I think we're in the shrieking shack. Harry looked around. His eyes fell on a wooden chair near them. Large chunks had been torn out of it. One of the legs had been ripped off entirely. Ghosts didn't do that, he said slowly. At that moment, there was a creak overhead. Something had moved upstairs. Both of them looked up at the ceiling. Hermione's grip on Harry's arm was so tight that he was losing feeling in his fingers. He raised his eyebrows at her. She nodded again and let go. Quietly as they could, they crept out into the hall and up the crumbling staircase. Everything was covered in a thick layer of dust except the floor, where a wide, shiny stripe had been made by something being dragged upstairs. They reached the dark landing. Knox, they whispered together, and the lights at the end of their wands went out. Only one door was open. As they crept towards it, they heard movement from behind it, a low moan, and then a deep, loud purring. They exchanged a last look, a last nod. Wand held tightly before him, Harry kicked the door wide open. On a magnificent four-poster bed with dusty hangings lay Crookshanks, purring loudly at the sight of them. On the floor beside him, clutching his leg, which stuck out at a strange angle, was Ron. Harry and Hermione dashed across to him. Ron, are you okay? Where's the dog? Not a dog, Ron moaned. His teeth were gritted with pain. Harry, it's a trap. What? He's the dog. He's, a, he's an animagus. Ron was staring over Harry's shoulder. Harry wheeled around and with a snap, the man in the shadows closed the door behind them. A mass of filthy matted hair hung to his elbows. If eyes hadn't been shining out of the deep, dark sockets, he might have been a corpse. The waxy skin was stretched so tightly over the bones of his face, it looked like a skull. His yellow teeth were barred in a grin. It was serious black. Expelliarmus, he croaked, pointing Ron's wand at them. Harry and Hermione's wand shot out of their hands high in the air and black caught them. Then he took a step closer. His eyes were fixed on Harry. I thought you'd come and help your friend, he said hoarsely. His voice sounded as though he had long ago lost the habit of using it. Your father would have done the same for me. Brave of you not to run for a teacher. I'm grateful. It will make everything much easier. The taunt about his father rang in Harry's ears as though Black had bellowed it. A boiling hate erupted in Harry's chest, leaving no place for fear. For the first time in his life, he wanted his wand back in his hand, not to defend himself, but to attack, to kill. Without knowing what he was doing, he started forwards, but there was a sudden movement on either side of him, and two pairs of hands grabbed him and held him back. No, Harry Hermione gasped in a petrified whisper. Ron, however, spoke to Black. If you want to kill Harry, you'll have to kill us too, he said fiercely, though the effort of standing up had drained him of still more color, and he swayed slightly as he spoke. <laughs> Something flickered in Black's shadowed eyes. Lie down, he said quietly to Ron. You will damage that leg of yours even more. Did you hear me, said Ron weakly, though he was clinging painfully to Harry to stay upright. You'll have to kill all three of us. Oh, there'll only be one murder here tonight, said Black, and his grin widened. Why is that? Harry spat, trying to wrench himself free of Ron and Hermione. Didn't care last time, did you? Didn't mind slaughtering all those muggles to get at Pettigrew. What's the matter? Gone soft in Azkaban? Harry, 
Lucy, Hermione whimpered. Be quiet. He killed my mom and dad, Harry roared. And with a huge effort, he broke free of Hermione and Ron's restraint and lunged forwards. He had forgotten about magic. He had forgotten that he was short and skinny and 13 and Black was a tall, full-grown man. All Harry knew was that he wanted to hurt Black as badly as he could and that he didn't care how hurt he got in return. Perhaps it was a shock of Harry doing something so stupid, but Black didn't raise the wands in time. One of Harry's hands fastened over Black's wasted wrist, forcing the wand tips away. The knuckles of Harry's other hand collided with the side of Black's head and they fell backwards into the wall. Hermione was screaming. Ron was yelling. There was a blinding flash as the wands and Black's hands sent into the air a jet of sparks, which missed Harry's face by inches. Harry felt the shrunken arm under his fingers twisting madly, but he clung on, his other hand punching every part of Black that it could find. But Black's free hand found Harry's throat. No, he hissed. I've waited too long. The fingers tightened. Harry choked, his glasses askew. Then he saw Hermione's foot swing out of nowhere. Black let go of Harry with a grunt of pain. Ron had thrown himself on Black's wand, and Harry heard a faint clatter. He fought free of the tangle of bodies and saw his own wand rolling across the floor. He threw himself towards it, but, ah, Crookshanks had joined the fray. Both sets of front claws had sunk themselves deep into Harry's arm. Harry threw him off, but Crookshanks now darted towards Harry's wand. No, you don't, roared Harry, and he aimed a kick at Crookshanks that made the cat leap aside, spitting, <laughs> Harry snatched up his wand and turned. Get out of the way, he shouted to Ron and Hermione. They didn't need telling twice. Hermione, gasping for breath, her lip bleeding, scrambled aside, snatching up her and Ron's wands. Ron crawled to the four-poster and collapsed onto it, panting, his white face now tinged with green, both hands clutching at his broken leg. Black was sprawled at the bottom of the wall, his thin chest rose and fell rapidly as he watched Harry walking slowly near, his wand pointing straight at Black's heart. Going to kill me, Harry, he whispered. Harry stopped right above him, his wand still pointing at Black's chest. Looking down at him, a livid bruise was rising around Black's left eye and his nose was bleeding. You killed my parents, said Harry, his voice shaking slightly, but his wand had quite steady. I don't deny it, he said very quietly, but if you knew the whole story. The whole story, Harry repeated, a furious pounding in his ears. You sold them to Voldemort, that's all I need to know. You've got to listen to me, Black said and there was a note of urgency in his voice now. You'll regret it if you don't. You don't understand. I understand a lot better than you think, said Harry, and his voice shook more than ever. You never heard her, did you? My mom trying to stop Voldemort from killing me, and you did that. You did it. Before either of them could say another word, something ginger streaked past Harry. Crookshanks leapt onto Black's chest and settled himself there, right over Black's heart. Black blinked and looked down at the cat. Get off, he murmured, trying to push Crookshanks off him. But Crookshanks sank his claws into Black's robes and wouldn't shift. He turned his ugly, squashed face to Harry and looked up at him with those great yellow eyes. To his right, Hermione gave a dry sob. Harry stared down at Black and Crookshanks, his grip tightening on the wand. So what if he had to kill the cat too? It was in league with Black. If it was prepared to die trying to protect Black, that wasn't Harry's business. If Black wanted to save it, that only proved he cared more for Crookshanks than Harry's parents. Harry raised the wand. Now was the moment to do it. 
Now was the moment to avenge his mother and father. He was going to kill Black. He had to kill Black. This was his chance. The seconds lengthened, and still Harry stood frozen there, wand poised, Black staring up at him. Crookshanks on his chest, Ron's ragged breathing came from near the bed. Hermione was quite silent. And then came a new sound. Muffled footsteps were echoing up through the floor. Someone was moving downstairs. We're up here, Hermione screamed suddenly. We're up here, Sirius Black, quick. Black made a startled movement that almost dislodged Crookshanks. Harry gripped his wand convulsively. Do it now, said a voice in his head. But the footsteps were thundering up the stairs and Harry still hadn't done it. The door of the room burst open a shower of red sparks and Harry wheeled around as Professor Lupin came hurtling into the room, his face bloodless, his wand raised and ready. His eyes flickered over Ron lying on the floor, over Hermione cowering next to the door and to Harry standing there with the wand in his hand, covering Black and then to Black himself, crumpled and bleeding at Harry's feet. Expelliarmus, Lupin shouted. The Harry's wand flew once more out of his hand. So did the two Hermione was holding. Lupin caught them all deftly and then moved into the room, staring at Black, who still had Crookshanks lying protectively across his chest. Harry stood there feeling suddenly empty. Huh. He hadn't done it. His nerve had failed him. Black was going to be handed back to the Dementors. Then Lupin spoke in an odd voice, a voice that shook with some suppressed emotion. Where is he, Sirius? Harry looked quickly at Lupin. He didn't understand what Lupin meant. Who was Lupin talking about? He turned to look at Black again. Black's face was quite expressionless. For a few seconds, he didn't move at all. Then, very slowly, he raised his empty hand and pointed straight at Ron. Mystified, Harry glanced around at Ron, who looked bewildered. But then, Lupin muttered, staring at Black so intently, it seemed he was trying to read his mind. Why hasn't he shown himself before now? Unless Lupin's eyes suddenly widened as though he was seeing something beyond Black, something none of the rest could see, unless he was the one. Unless you switched without telling me. Very slowly, his sunken gaze never leaving Lupin's face, Black nodded. Professor Lupin, Harry interrupted loudly, what's going? But he never finished the question because what he saw made his voice die right there in his throat. Lupin was lowering his wand. Next moment, he had walked to Black's side, seized his hand and pulled him to his feet so that Crookshanks fell to the floor and embraced Black like a brother. Harry felt as though the bottom had dropped out of his stomach. I don't believe it, Hermione screamed. Lupin let go of Black and turned to her. She had raised herself off the floor and was pointing at Lupin wild-eyed. You, you, Hermione, you and him. Hermione, calm down. I didn't tell anyone, Hermione shrieked. I've been covering up for you. Hermione. Listen to me, please, Lupin shouted. I can explain. Harry could feel himself shaking, not with fear, but with a fresh wave of fury. I trusted you, he shouted at Lupin, his voice wavering out of control. And, and all the time you've been his friend? You're wrong, said Lupin. I haven't been Sirius's friend for 12 years, but I am now. Let me explain. 
No, Hermione screamed. Harry, don't trust him. He's been helping Black get into the castle. He wants you dead too. He's a werewolf. There was a ringing silence. Everyone's eyes were now on Lupin, who looked remarkably calm, though rather pale. Not at all up to her usual standard, Hermione, he said. Only one out of three, I'm afraid. I have not been helping Sirius get into the castle, and I certainly don't want Harry dead. And an odd shiver passed over his face. But I won't deny that I am a werewolf. Ron made a valiant effort to get up again, but fell back with a whimper of pain. Lupin made towards him, looking concerned, but Ron gasped, Get away from me, you werewolf! Lupin stopped dead. Then, with an obvious effort, he turned to Hermione and said, How long have you known? Ages, Hermione whispered, since I did Professor Snape's essay. Oh, <laughs> he'll be delighted, said Lupin coolly. He set that essay hoping someone would realize what my symptoms meant. Did you check the Luter chart and realize that I was always ill at the full moon? Hmm? Or did you realize that the boggart changed into the moon when it saw me? Both, said Hermione quietly. <laughs> Lupin forced a laugh. You're the cleverest witch of your age that I have ever met, Hermione. I'm not, Hermione whispered. If I'd been a bit cleverer, I'd have told everyone what you are. They already know, said Lupin. Well, at least the staff do. Dumbledore hired you when he knew you were a werewolf, Ron gasped. Is he mad? <laughs> Some of the staff thought so, said Lupin. He had to work very hard to convince certain teachers that I am trustworthy. And he was wrong, Harry yelled. You've been helping him all the time. He was pointing at Black, who had crossed to the four-poster bed and sunk onto it, his face hidden in one shaking hand. Crookshanks had leapt up beside him and stepped onto his lap, purring. Ron edged away from both of them, dragging his leg. I have not been helping, Sirius, said Lupin. If you'll give me a chance, I'll explain. Look. He separated Harry, Ron, and Hermione's wands and threw each back to its owner, Harry caught his, stunned. There, said Lupin, sticking his own wand back into his belt. You're armed, we're not. Now will you listen? Harry didn't know what to think. Was it a trick? If you haven't been helping him, he said with a furious glance at Black, then how did you know he was here? The map, said Lupin. The Marauder's map. I was in my office examining it. You know how to work it? Harry said suspiciously. Of course I know how to work it, said Lupin, waving his hand impatiently. I helped to write it. I'm Mooney. That was my friend's nickname for me at school. You wrote? The important thing is I was watching it carefully this evening because I had an idea that you, Ron, and Hermione might try to sneak out of the castle to visit Hagrid before his hippogriff was executed. And I was right, wasn't I? Harry started to pace up and down, looking at them. Little patches of dust rose at his feet. You might have been wearing your father's old cloak, Harry. Well, how do you know about the cloak? The number of times I saw James disappearing under it, said Lupin, waving an impatient hand again. The point is, even if you are wearing an invisibility cloak, you show up on the Marauder's map. I watched you cross the grounds and enter Hagrid's hut. 20 minutes later, you left Hagrid and set off back towards the castle. But you were accompanied by somebody else. What, said Harry? No, we weren't. Mm. I couldn't believe my eyes, said Lupin, still pacing and ignoring Harry's interruption. I thought the mat must be malfunctioning. How could he be with you? No one was with us, said Harry. And then I saw another dot moving fast towards you, labeled Sirius Black. I saw him collide with you. I watched as he pulled two of you into the Whomping Willow. One of us, said Ron angrily. No, Ron, said Lupin. 
two of you. He had stopped his pacing, his eyes moving over to Ron. Do you think that I could have a look at that rat? He said evenly. What? said Ron. What scabbers got to do with it? Everything, said Lupin. Could I see him, please? Ron hesitated and then put a hand inside his robes. Scabbers emerged, thrashing desperately. Ron had to seize his long, bald tail to stop him from escaping. Crookshank stood up on Black's lap and made a soft hiss, hissing sound. Lupin moved closer to Ron. He seemed to be holding his breath as he gazed intently at Scabbers. What, Ron said again, holding Scabbers close to him, looking scared. What's my rat got to do with anything? That's not a rat, croaked Sirius Black suddenly. What do you mean? Of course he's a rat. No, he's not, said Lupin quietly. He's a wizard. An animagus, said Black, by the name of Peter Pettigrew 